Reduced sunspot activity has been observed and indicates the sun is heading into a 50-year reduced solar activity, similar to what happened in the mid-17th century. This cool-down is the result of what scientists call a grand minimum, a periodic event during which the sun's magnetism diminishes. Sunspots form infrequently and less ultraviolet radiation makes it to the surface of the planet. Scientists believe that the event is triggered at irregular intervals by random fluctuations related to the sun's magnetic field. Scientists have used reconstructions based on geological and historical data to attribute a cold period in Europe in the mid-17th century to such an event named the Maunder Minimum. Temperatures were low enough to freeze the Thames River on a regular basis and freeze the Baltic Sea to such an extent that the Swedish army was able to invade Denmark in 1658 on foot by marching across the sea ice. The reduced energy from the sun sets into motion a sequence of events on Earth beginning within the thinning of the stratospheric ozone layer. That thinning in turn changes the temperature structure of the stratosphere, which then changes the dynamics of the lower atmosphere, especially wind and weather patterns. The cooling is not uniform. While areas of Europe chilled during the Maunder Minimum, other areas such as Alaska and southern Greenland warmed correspondingly. Articles may say, despite how much a Maunder Minimum might have affected Earth the last time, that an upcoming event would not stop the current trend of planetary warming, but might slow it somewhat. The cooling effect of a Grand Minimum is only a fraction of the warming effect caused by the increasing concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Is that really the case? CO2 has been higher before. Only time will tell. We have other factors to consider as well. Galactic cosmic rays, volcanism, earthquakes, magnetic pole shifts. Regardless of what your beliefs may be, the human race is going to face some challenges in the next few decades. Many have grown complacent with daily routine. The masses do not question the teachings to our children from outdated textbooks. We are molded to conform into this society driven by a monetary system that holds no true value. As a human race, we are all slaves to the system. They use fear to control, to confuse, and to breed hate. Where does your fear stem from? Do you question the outside influences around you? The media machine molds our minds, our children's minds. We are fooled into thinking there is a side we need to choose. We'll quote from the lie we live. The elite who hide behind the logos of corporations. This is their world, and their most valuable resource is not in the ground. It is us. We build their cities. We run their machines. We fight their wars. After all, money isn't what drives them, it's power. Money is simply the tool they use to control us. Worthless pieces of paper we depend on to feed us, move us, entertain us. They gave us money, and in return, we gave them the world. Our society has taken for granted what Mother Earth has given us, the means to survive. The majority has lost the skill set to survive. We have lost most of our local farms. We have grown dependent on the convenience of a grocery store. We are bred to consume, consume, and consume on a system that cannot sustain consumption. We are like a plague that has taken over the planet. What other species destroys their environment the way humans do? What will we do? What will our children do when there's nothing more to consume? I don't care what your beliefs are. As a human race, it's imperative we make a shift and adapt to more sustainable lifestyles. The time is now. Let's get back to the basics. Respect our Mother Earth. Teach our children to plant seeds and grow. We need to cut back the waste 
we need to heighten our consciousness. I have faith the human race can accept this challenge. We will learn to no longer take for granted all that we have. We are privileged to live in a time where we can be so connected. We can change this. We must work together as a community. I used to work for Apple. I've taken to heart the Crazy Ones poem. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do.